Hello again in our fifth lecture of this course. Um, we're finishing up with uh, introducing translation series problems and solutions as Ghazala uh, adopted the practical um, approach his for students to avoid common problems you know in the future while they're translating from one language into another so um, this lecture we start with because we finished with the uh, previous chapter that's uh, grammatical problems overview so this slide would be um, a brief um, conclusion on uh, grammatical problems so we offered many problems for past lectures we offered solutions we've seen we've touched on different types of grammatical it's problems 10 o'clock grammatical problems <coughs> so please for more uh, acquiring knowledge you should do exercise or you should visit exercise on page um, 81, 82, 83 do them they don't require much time or effort you just need to apply your knowledge of the theories that we had during the previous lectures um, and here in this slide I chose one a question to do and that's uh, and that's a translation of the sorry what is it what's the problem of this um, okay um, so we are um, there's a problem it's a technical problem I think I, I would ask you to do a translate the following statements into nominal structure in Arabic is not I chose a, a simple sentences statements it's not that hard give us if you're entering to say we need your yeah, you do this to listen to your uh, Give it a shot. Give it a shot. That means give it a try. For example, to the Rahana, the Owen has the Tagro Tarshana, and the Stamarushan, and the Sul in the Zia Ian Lavi, and the Lizzie Jokum. Oh, Halo, there's no Abdin Ahmed Jumal Basifa, and Shark, Munkum, the Ahar, and the Mohawat, and Abdin Mix. Okay. Um, and that's whole about grammatical problems and now we're moving into um, now we're moving into the second chapter and it's, it's important as much the same with grammatical problems and that's lexical problems so lexical problems they pose some questions we look into various types of these um, um, problems and the types of lectures okay so let's move into a second slide for more details so now on this slide we start with uh, one new chapter a new lesson and that's the lexical problem or problems what is it what is mm, uh, uh, lexical problems what they are um, so just we start with the introduction remarks mm, uh, the greater number of translation problems for students are of course lexical problems students face problems with words words are usually given the first importance in translation so point of over exaggeration Moreover, most of the students' mistakes are bare, superficial, word for word translation of the source language to text, and ignorance of Arabic equivalents. So they miss up with translation. 
in that way. More seriously, they understand translation as a translation of individual words only. So that's not the way a translation should be. You can't just do a word for word. Because translation is culture. Sometimes you, you need to adopt yourself to study the culture of world language in Canada. You need to look into the structure from different angles in order to render the translation properly, which is very much the contrast of reality in translation practice. So, um, in this, um, in the coming discussions, we're looking into fundamental lexical problems of the translation from English into Arabic, and we give examples. Um, and some of the suggestions or solutions that Professor Gazelle adopted. So now we're dealing with the different types of lexical or the problems that occur in lexical uh, problems. We would start with the literal translation of meanings. What is a um, the central lexical problem for the students of translation is their direct literal translation for almost all words. They dedicate themselves to and in an unusual way in all text and context in regard to all words, phrases and expressions. Although any language is words in isolation, it can't be understood as such words are used together in special combination, text and context. So you can't render word for word because words are not separable from a text or context. النص والأيضاً المحتوى مهم جداً. أوقات يكون حتى from a pragmatic perspective sometimes حتى المحتوى الفيزيائي والجسدي الموجود أمامكم يحتاج إلى نقل. يؤثر على المعنى في الكلمات. Furthermore, the grammatical words which have no meaning, grammatical words have just functions, but used for a specific grammatical function, such as the use of a verb do to make questions and negation in English, have to form the present perfect tense, etc. And two, lexical words which have meanings and make up language. The relation between language and words is exactly like the relation between human body and its constituent parts. The body exists and works perfectly only when body parts exist and work perfectly together. So that's a metaphor to, uh, exam to exemplify the translation process. So translation is based on different elements, you know. Uh, you can't just cut one part and say this is less important and another part is more important than one part. So it's complementary. All elements complete one another in order to produce a very uh, good translation from one language into another. Likewise, the, the parts don't and can't work in isolation. Each part works in relation to and in connection with other parts. Okay. Sorry. A, a common mistake is committed by students when they take literal translation to be applicable to everything in language. No, that's not the way, the way it works. You can't just do it that way, like you translate word for word. Don't you don't think that it works for all texts? Yeah, of course. Sometimes work for word translation is is a, is manageable, is okay, is acceptable, but not always. So the comparison between the following three groups of example illustrate the point here. Group one would, for instance, يطفو الخشب على الماء would floats on water. Answer my question, please. أجب على سؤالي من فضلك. A word of honor. كلمة شرف. نمشي الجروب B. 
which is rainy day يوم المطر can of worms علبة بيتان could see enough is enough بلغ السيل الزبا أو تطح الكيل زاد الأمر على حد it has more than one interpretation fat soury واتب ضخم وعال جدا so by comparing these three proofs with one another we notice that in a the direct translation is quite feasible yes already on a kalima chop in c literal translation is not possible by any means like you see it لو نقوله fat salary هل لما نقولها كلمة كلمة هل نقول راتب سميم مثلا أو زايد وزن no doesn't it doesn't work however word for word translation works for group a like a word of أنا كلمة شر so in C literal translation is not possible by any means the following literal translation is where five examples C into Arabic confirms the point like enough is enough كافن كافن no does it make sense كافن كافن no بينما لو نقارنها بترجمة C لي بلغ السيل سبا طفح الكيل زاد الأمر عن حده فهنا تعرف في معنى آخر فالترجمة الحرفية أو كلمة بكلمة لا تشتغل بهذا الشكل tall order أمر ترتيب نظام طويل fat salary واتب سمين low to fight the dust يعض التراب لا All these literal word for word translation are strange and not understandable. Moreover, three and five are funny. More seriously, five can be described as a dangerous translation because it's insulting and could put an end to a translator's career. If you were in my shoes, my poet, لو كنت في حذائي أو قاربي, no, doesn't work like that. So you see how 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 is it, how meaning is important, how not to translate and to think word for word is important. Yes, it is. So if you do it that way, word for word, like this example, I would just say, if you were my shoes, you will end up your career. So as regards group B, both letter and non letter translations are possible, but not at the same time. That is, types of text and context are essential to decide which translation to choose. For instance, in a sentence describing a day in winter, rainy day has one translation only. Today it's sunny, but yesterday was a rainy day. Yom, ol, yom al -mar. Is applicable here, whereas Yom and Aswad mm, is not. On the other hand, only Yom Aswad is acceptable in a translation of the English proverb, save for rainy day. Sad Qarsh al Abyad al Yom al Aswad, save for rainy day. Sad Qarsh al Abyad al Yom al Aswad, wafar al Shidda, save for a rainy day. This culture as well, it, 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 it's associated with culture. You can't just print the meaning without understanding the culture of it. So more and word for word translation is to translate each word in an English sense into a common equivalent in Arabic in the same way order we speak English. Please make say Mufadikasna Shahi. Who are you? Menta Kunu and here it's worded in English into its Arabic meaning literally and in the same order as illustrated by the use of numbers. Although word for word translation and literal translation are the same in these and other similar examples, they're not so in many others consider the following comparative example where first Arabic translation is literal. But the second is word for word translation. He fell ill, was and and so on. So 
basic kind of um, um, translation. You know, you could um, so that's you know more of how. So that's how the literal translation of meaning it is. Not every word should be interpreted word for word. Not everything is word for word translation. Now we're moving to look at translation of synonyms or synonym. The translation of synonym and the word taradif or taradif kalima. Synonym is the sameness. Yani mutaradifat or the similarity of meaning between two or more words such words are described as synonymous or synonyms for example big large and huge are synonyms usually synonyms are divided into two major types one is absolute synonyms and the other is near or close synonyms absolute synonyms is who are words which are preferably identical in meaning however near absolute synonyms words which are similar to one another in meaning it's well established the universal fact in the study of meaning words that language in general that absolute synonyms don't exist in languages or are quite rare to say that least the reason is that there is no need for more than one word or signifier to describe the same thing or idea or signified in the language. However, when two or more words are used to describe the same thing, there must be a difference of some kind between them. For example, using this section illustrate the reasons for such a difference. Parallel to that is the fact that near synonyms are commonplace in any language spoken or written. They're even this in this principle to cover all shades of difference with one and the same range of meaning. If we look into the first problem is the translation of synonyms of emotive charge. He is angry, he is discomforted, who mumtad. He is annoyed, he is disturbed or bothered, he is inconvenient, he is, uh, guide, uh, he is furious, sorry, if we look into who is enraged or outraged, He's worried, he's nervous, and so on. Here are 16 synonyms for, for one and the same meaning of the word angry. Rather. They are not exhaustive. They form together what's called a lexical set or a lexical field of anger. We have 16 different words in English and 15 words called the Herman Erben. This can be described as a possession procession of translation. However, the problem for students is that it's hard task for them to find the precise synonym word in Arabic. So yeah, more uh, that's how so that that's how the main problem is the translation of synonyms. Um to conclude, the translation of synonyms to synonyms is sometimes difficult and complicated. Some synonymous words, especially those with emotive charge, anger, fear, love, hatred, etc., may have a meaning of different levels each. You know, sometimes it's very close, and their interpretation is kind of pose a problem. The students of translation as well as translators are therefore required to take them into consideration in the Arabic translation. However, a synonym can be translated easily when a distinction between levels of meaning is unnecessary and unimportant. Only a term of general nature, example expressing constant, contrast, surprise, carriage, etc., is needed. Also, the possibility of having 
it says what sinner means equally acceptable versions of translation is very often available but with some restrictions though as will be demonstrated demonstrated in the third chapter below the tricky but interesting problem of translate translating familiar alternatives should be handled with care in translation into Arabic for its sensitive cultural and local flavor and nature in the language. Generally speaking, when a clause is essential, the translation synonym becomes more difficult and delicate. Yet, with more care and concerted, concerted efforts by teachers, students of translation and translators, it's helpful hope that this accuracy in the translation of synonym can be achieved. Now we're moving into the translation of glossomy and glossomy. So you know, some words have more than one meaning and that's what the glossomy. So glossomy, what, what is it? You might be asking a question, what the glossomy mean is a word that has more than one meaning بعض الكلمات قد يكون لها أكثر من معنى وكيف يمكن نخرج من هالمأزق هذا في ترجمتها لأن على المفاتيح contextual clues ذات المفاتيح النصية بنشوف هنا بيئة الكلمة تقع so it's contrasted to monosomy which describes a word with one single meaning only for example stage is a blossomous word among whose Main meanings are khutwa, step, marhala, tawr, a platform in a theater, or theater, masrah, or kasharat masrah, stage. Other hand, telephone and sleep have one meaning each, hat, and yanamu, or no, respectively. Therefore, they are monosomous, monosomous. Monosomous words and terms create no serious problem. On a condition that they are standardized and available in the target language. Most of these words and terms are of technical scientific nature reference, hence, their translation to Arabic, Arabization is the major problem of translation. That is why Arabization is signed a long section in this chapter. As regards philosophy, which is a point of focus of this section, it's one of the major distinguishing characteristics of both English and Arabic, and maybe English more than Arabic. Moreover, many philosophy words have a common meaning, each which is more popular and knowing that than other meanings. It's called core or central meaning, and that's it, you know. Uh, for example, sound has a core meaning of salt. At the same time, it has other less popular meanings of firm or solid, wise, valid, narrow channel. And in light in that on the city to be discussed below in the section, the problem this translation may know only the common meaning of blossomic word and are usually translated into Arabic requires any of its other possible meanings. This means they understand it as monosomous word. Having one meaning only, in effect, they might omit serious mistakes to follow. So they think that this word has more, uh, doesn't have more than just one, one meaning. And, and then the problem occurs. Like the boy broke the window, kasara al-waladu nafida The thief broke the car, broke the car, kasara al siyara so we expected the break of the lock to kana kasr al qafal aw al qafal sorry and so on that's how philosophy so that's what the, the and, and more i like the sound of birds i have the sound of you the vocal cords produce the sound thus the hibra sawtiya sound most of the sound 
Can you hear the sound? Have you seen a like so? Radio frequencies are sound waves. That is the air moves in so yeah. How did you shift the the use of the word sound more than of just one um, issue? And that's uh, how blossom work. Okay. There are thousands of phrases, verbs in English. They're so popular, posted, and written, and as well as a spoken language. Although they're classified as informal in translation, however, they pose considerable translation problem to students. And yeah, that's what the philosophy are. And students can distinguish between these two types of verbs by looking at the context and find out. Whether a verb makes sense if translated into its common meaning, check it in a dictionary and do or seek help from any kind of available reference or authority. See the section on idioms, phrasal verbs below. In some monosemic words, don't create a problem of meaning confusion, whereas polysemic words for words do the best. Um, Mm, the best solution to picking up the intended meaning of the blossoms word is to take into account the steps just discussed from one to seven in particular. Then students can hopefully reach a satisfactory solution at translating that word into Arabic. Okay, so that's how blossomy literal translation translation. Blossomies of. So now let's get into our last slide of this presentation as uh, we're looking at translation of collocation, types of collocation, translation of special effects, phrases. Phrases. Because, you know, um, let's understand. Uh, I'm trying to make it like very fast. I don't, I'm sorry, be patient with that thing. Um, so, translation of collocation. Collocation. A collocation is a habitual occurrence of individual lexical items, crystal, printed in new mark, and its combination of two or more words, two or more words that always occur together consistently in different texts and contexts and languages. That is, a certain noun occurs with a certain adjective, for instance, blind contents. <laughs> A verb with a noun draw a sword, just to safe sword. A noun with um, um, a noun with with a noun brain brain. مثلا زي هجرة الأجنبي يعني كلمتين دائما تلقاها مع بعض التلازمات اللفظية يسموها في اللغة العربية قلقش. الملازمات اللفظية اللي هي تتلازم دائما مع بعض الصفة مع اسم اسم مع فعل وهكذا right etc simply it's which goes with which in language namely which word goes with which word many collocations are two words each drawing comparison between the text and the human body Numak he's a scholar of translation likes Oh, link, sorry, link, uh, likens grammar to skeleton, to the skeleton. Okay, where is the flesh? And collocations are the tendons that connect them to one another. So that's um, how he depicts the importance of collocation. Indeed, collocations will play a vital role in language. There are spiritual parts and inject a refreshing spirit in it. They're present and inevitable in any kind of text with no exception. Okay, hence the importance in translation to speak to them to them fully in Arabic, blend the Arabic version, the same beauty of the English text. Without it, your translation wouldn't be enough. Mean that undermine the concern with the translation of the English collocation in Arabic, which has been the case until very recently, results in poor 
ديسبيرتد ايرفيكتس بيطلع النص بتاعك يعني فقير جدا The translation of collocation can be discussed through the discussion of the common types in English. In principle, fixed phrases and expressions of all types can sum under the general umbrella of collocation. Yet, for convenience or discussion and classification, fixed phrases like idioms, idioms, or fixed phrases tab tab. تركيب تابتة يعني مصطلحية متعارف عليها and proverbs in particular are assigned independent sections ok so now let's get to know what the types of collocations are that we have one type of, there are several types of actually however the concentration here is on the most important ones and we start with one type is adjective noun collocation so the structure of it adjective plus now, مثل hard labor, أشغال شقة أو مخابن عسير, net weight, الوزن الصافي, net weight, الوزن الصافي, raging storm, ريح عاصف, تسليب سبات عميق, تسليب سبات عميق يعني نوم عميق, صار smashing victory. So you look at the structure of this phrase or fixed collocation. Adjective plus an hour, and more, more of other example. If you want to say it, go back and visit the text for more understanding. Uh, one more type, and that is um, what is it? Verb, noun, collocation. So the structure of this uh, a verb like a tent plus an hour, a tent, a lecture. يحضر محاضرة. Exert an effort. يبذلوا جهدا. To exert. Pass a law. يسنوا قانونا. To pass a law. يسنوا قانونا. One company. يديروا شركة. وهكذا. And and so on. Yeah. You see. So this type is a verb noun. Collocation. Two words to make collocation. Noun noun collocation. That's a third type. And it's a brain. Brain. هجرة الأجرة. Nerve cell, خلية أعصاب, statue كو الوضع الراح, death sentence or death sentence, حكم الأعدام and more more of the expressions. One more type and that's the noun noun of genitive the adjective collocation, loss of memory فقدان الذاكرة. The heart of the matter, جوهر الأشياء. The break of dawn, بزوغ الفجر. The break of dawn, the court of the appeal, محكمة الاستئناف. The debts of despair, أعماق اليأس. And so on. Noun and noun addition. العطف يعني. Collocation. مثلا زي means and ends. الوسائل والغايات. Means and ends. الوسائل والغايات وندمنس بيولدمنس عجائب وغرائب بريد اند باتر مورد رزق فونت اليوم لقمة العيش بريد اند باتر فود اند درينك الطعام والشرب جود اند ايفل الخير والشر في كل مكان طبعا اند مور تايبس از ادجكتيف ادجكتيف كولوكيشن هيل اند هير اند هارتي بصحة جيدة healthy and well بصحة وعافية well and good على خير ما يرام and more of other types adverb adverb collocation والظروف holy and heartedly بالتمام والكمال willy nilly شاء أم أبا willy nilly رغما عن أنفه willy nilly okay Secretly and publicly, sirran wa alaniya, or fi sirri wa alaniya, wa alan. So the three areas of translation are collocations, but have different grammatical structure. They are grammatically different from the English collocations. Therefore, um, like those of six above, they create a problem. However, they are not difficult to understand. Therefore, they are not unusual nor 
uh, idiomatic noun verb collocation names of sounds like bees buzz dawi nahl noun tabda bi ism wa tantahi bi fa'al bells ring or toll ranin al ajrash bell ranin al ajras cats meow cats meow mawaq dogs bark nubah al kilab donkeys pray nahiq al hamir Doors creak, sarir ul abwab, flies buzz, tanin ul dubab, and so on. Noun verb, huh? Collocation. Lions roar, zair ul usud, snakes hiss, fahih ul afai, sparrows chirp, zakzaka tul asafir, trees rustle. حفيف الشجر عواء الذئاب wolves howl so these calculations are not difficult to translate into written Arabic the only problem of course is to be able to recognize them as a sound of the animal insect or thing required it's not hard and the more مازال أمثلة أكثر في الكولوكيشن اللي هو الترازمات اللفظية preposition collocation تبدا تلقوها نون بروبوزيشن كولوكيشن تلقوها باسم مع الحرف الجر مثلا بلاي اون تلاعب بالالفاظ بلاي اون ووردز تلاعب بالالفاظ اكلايم فو ادعاء بروتست اجينست احتجاج على بيرست اكرم وهكذا تفاخر برايد اغنورنس اوف سمثينج الجهل بشيء ما اند مور اكزامبلز And more examples, if you want to look at, please visit the textbook on page 116, 115, 113, 117, 118 for more details. Okay. Um, parts of carnival nouns. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that's that's how things work. Okay. And that's in short, in brief, a translation of special uh, of, of um, collocation and understanding the types of collocations. So, the tlazim al lafdi, ah, tlazim al lafdi the kalima. We just met a few minutes ago, and by extension, it was very difficult. So, to add more to the lesson, of course, we need to read and listen to the visit. احنا مجرد نعرج عليها بشكل مبسط ومختصر عندكم انتم الان بين ايديكم تستكس بوك الكتاب ويمكن مراجعتها وتزيدوا تتوسعوا اكثر في البحث اوكي ناو ليتس موف انتو ترانسليشن اوف سبيشال فاكس فريزز اللي هي التعابير الثابته او احيانا الديماتيك لانجويج اللي هي تعبير الاصطلاحية متعارف عليها. This is very very sometimes requires effort. You need to memorize these facts expressions. Special phrase is a phrase with تعريفها طبعا with a special meaning that cannot be understood from the direct surface meaning of its words. ليش نعرفها من المعنى المباشر والسطحي قد يوم أمامي. No, it has a hidden meaning. Nor from the total meaning when taken together. A fixed phrase, on the other hand, is a phrase which always has one single grammatical and lexical form and word order that cannot be changed, interrupt or interrupted or reversed. In this sense, both idioms and the verbs are special and fixed phrases. التعبير الاصطلاحية وأيضا الأمثال الشعبية هي كلمات ثابتة ولا يمكن التحول تحويرها أو كذا حفظا تحفظ كما هي. One of the major translation problems for us is the translation of special facts and phrases, idioms and proverbs in particular. So the discussion tackles the problems of translating them, starting with the now we're moving to translation of idioms, التعبير الاصطلاحية. An idiom is fixed. Phrase whose form is usually unchangeable and whose meaning is always the same. The same. Who are inflexible, غير مرن, 
ميتافوريكال ان اندريكت غير مباشر وايضا فيه ابداع يعني ميتافوريكال فور اكزامبل هارد تاسك ميتافوريكال يعني زي الشعريه الحاجه اوكي سو هارد تاسك كان بي ترانسليت دايركتلي انتو مهمه شاق وراز تول اوردر كانت بي كاوز ات شودنت بي ترانسليتن تو ان انكلي امر اون نظام طويل ادريكت انتو مهمه شاقه هذا فك therefore the former is not an idiom whereas the latter is the discussion of the translation of English idioms into Arabic can be traced through the following three groups group A direct idioms passing the exam is not a bad of roses this is an idiom a bad of roses A true friend doesn't stab in a pack. الصديق الحقيقي لا يفعل الظهر. Let's look at passing the exam is difficult. أن جاه في امتحان أمر صعب. A true friend doesn't betray. الصديق الحقيقي لا يخون. Serve me so that I serve you. أخدمني ليخدمك. Uh, and, and so on. So group B indirect idioms. My car is second hand. What does it mean by second hand? My car is second hand. When we say second hand, that means car is How nice to remember you. Palm days. Oh my God. Palmy days are palmy days. أيام النخيل مثلا بترجمها لا ما تجيش اندركتها غير مباشر My niece is so selfish She's a dog in a manager What does it mean a dog in a manager كلب في الكذا No ابنة أخي أنانية جدا أنها مثل ذكر النحل تأكل العسل وتضيق المكان لا تحب الخير لنفسها وتمنعه عن غيرها Beating the Brazilian football team is a tall order. Hazen, فريق البرازيل لكرة القدم مهمة شاقة. He's a big shot. God, هو إنه رجل عظيم. He's a big shot. Shot. رجل عظيم. The innocent man remained in the cloud for some time. بقى البريء فريسة للشك. So that's how fixed phrases are interpreted. These are the problems we're dealing with in this uh, context. Group C phrasal verbs. The phrasal verbs are well established. Extremely popular idioms as explained earlier. Phrasal verb is a combination of verb plus an adverb preposition or both. An adverb and a preposition such as up, down, on, off, in, out, over. It has a special idiomatic meaning that can't be understood from individual meaning of a verb and a verb preposition taken together. The students face a big problem at translating English phrasal verbs into Arabic because they are misleading and usually confused with preposition verbs let's just say a verb preposition which are not idiomatic and retain their normal direct meaning the criterion of distinguishing between the two types of verb is to apply the translation to both of them to find out if meaning is altered please put the book on a table من فضل الضاع الكتاب على الطاولة That's how how fixed expressions or fixed phrases are. For more details, please see uh, this the pages one thirty five, one thirty four, one thirty six. We're moving into translation of verbs. This is so hard. 
sometimes you need to memorize it from as it is absolute equivalence like like father like son al walad sirru abi al walad tala li abi كنت تفيو جيت تيل تمورو لا تؤجل عمل اليوم الى الغد all the glitters all the glitters is not old ما كل ما يلمع ذهبا لا no. oh, that glitters is gold ليس كل ما يلمع ذهب okay so these are proverbs and these are the types of this presentation uh, we started it with uh, an over a grammatical chapter overview and then we moved to the to offer lexical problems and suggest solutions or types of uh, lexical problems okay and that's it for today's class thank you for listening wait for more lectures to come Talk to you soon.